Hi all, let's look at another amazing game from the set of 20 that DeepMind gave me recently. So this is against Stockfish, this is under TSET conditions. D4 from Stockfish 8 and the opening book forced on them is a Dutch defense and in fact the Leningrad variation, one of my favorites. I've actually played this variation in one of the British chess championships that I played in one year. Uh, it's a very, very exciting opening. Let's see. So d6, knight c3, c6. We have rook b1, and this is the end of the book. Now, uh, against b4, to try and discourage that, a5. We have queen b3, knight a6. Uh, here, king h8 has been played in this position, as in Bindrich against Kamsky in Moscow 2016 which was a nice win for Katakamsky, if you want to check that out in the pinned comment of this video. So we have though in this game knight a6, rook d1, h6, bishop e3, rook b8, now rook bc1, bishop d7, we have c5 check, the king goes to h7. Knight a4, so Stockfish has its eye on that b6 square. Quite a lockdown it seems. But in playing c5, a slight downside, this knight might be perched, or this one later could potentially go to d5 in two different routes at the moment. Uh, this, this route as well, potentially. So we have, in fact, knight c7 being used. Bishop d2. And the advantage of this route is on route, a tempo gain on the queen with bishop e6 is supported, kicking that queen away. And now knight cd5. So it seems, in a sense, what what, what is Stockfish doing with this c5? What's the point here? Well, one of the points is starting to be revealed with b3. Uh, the knight can actually go back here, potentially and try and probe black's position, especially this d6 point. We have rook a8, bishop e1, queen e8, and this is a little bit sly and attacking, because in Dutch defences, sometimes the queen would like to go to h5. And we have e3, g5, and in fact, knight d2 is used. This way of probing is also possible for knight c4, but is that knight useful for the king side? Is it being taken away from the king side? King safety, queen h5, bishop f3, and then we have g4, which seems to fix black's, black's uh, pawns down. So is this a minor success for white? Bishop e2, king h8, which vacates the h7 square. And sometimes this might be very interesting to try and sometimes get the dreaded form pawn if this pawn takes there, there'll be a dreaded form pawn on f3. See the teespring thing in the description for form pawn t-shirts. Okay, so knight c4 though, and both knights are like clamping down on b6, but this one's also got its eye on d6. Here on queen b2, knight h7 is already dangerous. For example, uh, knight g5, let's see the form pawn or, or knight h3 check. This this way, f4 is another way to get a fawn on f3. And if losing the rook, f takes, in fact, might be stronger than installing the fawn pawn here because of this line where it's very dangerous for white's king. This is pretty crushing, actually, this position. That's going to end up with a massive advantage. So let's have a look at this line again. Instead of a3, let's try and stop knight g5. Here, there's knight g5. It's very dangerous if takes takes. We can see in slow motion rook f6 to h6 will be very handy for mating on h2 or h1. Well, queen h1 in particular, the king's got an escape. Uh, bishop c4 as an example, rook f6, this position, and yes, it is really dangerous, this kind of thing, if this happens. Ouch. And let's look at this line again. Instead of bishop c4, f4, this is again devastation. So actually, what starts with a small backward retreat for a knight, as we see in these lines, is very, very dangerous here with knight h7, extremely dangerous. So actually, we had knight c4, though. 
and now knight e4 which commits the knight it seems to go in this way is there a difference here white plays h4 uh, so instead of going the h7 route it's gone the e4 route uh, so on a3 knight g5 yeah we're getting that knight potentially onto f3 or knight h3 check as well as as seen so uh we have h4 and now knight g5 is played so this looks to be opening up the h file very aggressive dynamic peace sacrifice uh if something like queen g6 black actually still has a reasonable attack position for example like this with a peace sack on f4 it shows black's got real attacking potential here which is encouraging to potential leningrad defense leningrad dutch leningrad players so knight g5 here very dynamic takes takes so as mentioned before rook f6 to h6 this rook left is is very interesting f3 to try and parry things it turns out in this position why it might have overestimated the position it seems as though a lot of roads are bad here now whilst f3 was played it also seems for example that bishop f1 f4 queen e4 to try and defend via h1 but that's shut down offering the bishop and the form pawn here changes the whole picture black is actually much better after this rook left with tempo if white has to sack the queen this is very very bad news indeed this kind of scenario and the rook's going to go to h8 and the form pawn sealing the white king's fate so we have f3 here it already smacks a little bit of desperation to play f3 uh, one more thing i mean just just to see if white does nothing then actually rook f6 and rook h6 as mentioned before coming into h1 soon okay that's so f3 has to do something stockfish has to do something g takes bishop f1 but now f4 and although the rook is uh protecting d4 it's starting to look a little bit wobbly for white here we have rook d2 trying to use that second rank uh with things like rook h2 which seems dangerous with the king there is the king in the wrong place well in fact f takes is played the king might not actually be in the wrong place at all here this is extremely dangerous position we have actually knight takes e3 being played in this position okay here it looks as though the queen can be pinned however on rook h2 black plays f2 check and this is a disaster for white for example king h1 queen takes h2 nice queen sack rook f6 and there's all sorts of major threats now in the position uh, so say g4 check taking here black's ending up with a massive attack of the takes taking this big material advantage as well so this is absolutely much better for black things are falling apart for white there if we look at this line again after f2 if king g2 even worse in a way knight f4 check giving the bishop that nice diagonal <laughs> yeah well definitely looks a lot worse actually ouch yeah this is just crushing yeah with g takes f uh, four as well yeah <laughs> that's that's not particularly nice is it so it seems as though rook h2 does backfire so basically uh white played knight takes e3 after knight takes e3 this hits the queen now rook h2 is played here and it's under very different circumstance with the queen hit uh, if the queen uh moved then knight g4 protects h2 anyway stopping rook h2 and there's f2 as well so for example this f2 check queen h2 check is mate check and mate in fact if rook takes f2 bishop d5 is nasty threatening queen h1 checkmate if bishop g2 check queen takes g2 is crushing using that pin absolutely crushing so we have rook h2 being played but now a key move black to play so tactically how would you get out of this with your queen pinned and it looks to be with check what's a great move here if i give you five seconds 
Okay, you might want to pause the video. Okay, last chance. Okay, Bishop H3. Yeah, this is the key move. So now with the Queen attacked, it's tricky. If Rook, well, Rook takes H3 was played. Uh, if Queen D2, we can take on F1. So eliminating uh, a big, well, a big pressure there on, on H3. And in fact, we've got then G4 after as well. And if Queen D3, again, Knight takes F1, and then Bishop takes D4, Bishop takes, and then just G4 will do it. Big advantage. Uh, on Bishop takes H3 here, leaving the queen attacked. There's knight takes c2. And this is just too slow for white ever to do anything. Just king g7 gets black, uh, massive advantage. So rook takes h3 was played straight away. And we get quite a fast and furious transition into an endgame scenario. After queen takes, yeah, this is the, the key idea, inserting this move. And now knight takes. And now bishop takes, and now these bishops come off. So a very fast transition, king g7. So the two rooks against rook and knight and bishop, but black has a load of pawns. Three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. Three extra pawns. Okay, and this is just super nice for black, this endgame scenario. Let's have a look at what happens. So encouraging now after this skewering move, the rooks to come off, so just two pawns. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, <coughs> five, six. <coughs> now rook h6 hitting the bishop. D5. And now yeah, black's got a fantastic endgame here. The bishop and knight are not that well coordinated. So the king starts coming up, sealing down things. And the king comes to hit c5 there. Check. Take c5. There's two big pass pawns on the way in the center. Uh, so this is just showing the technique now, basically, of alpha zero. So two connected pass pawns here. And we're coming towards where the game ended here by adjudication. So rook e4, game ended here. Black adjudicated win both engines for it was huge advantage for black so let's see if it continued with knight f4 say king c5 knight h5 rookie one keeps that shield against the king entering over here and then black can start moving these pawns up little by little okay hitting the knight there is an interruption but this pins down white that pin knight and the two connected pass pawns would be absolutely easily winning here massive advantage so yeah, a crushing game in the Leningrad Dutch. Really nice attacking maneuvers, which I I believe, well, I feel I need to go and try and play this in my own games if, if that's online or over the board. Either. It looks as though the Dutch defense, Leningrad, is perhaps more dangerous than we imagined uh, if there's this kind of attacking resource examples available <laughs> to make use of in our own games. Okay, if you enjoyed this game video and analysis, then please click on the top left box, which should appear shortly to become a member at chessworld.net. You can play against other YouTubers. You can also check the YouTube analysis in advance of these games from the improved menu learned from the Masters YouTube order button. Comments, questions, donations, see the description, like, share, subscribe with the notification bell. Really appreciate it. And also there's the new Teespring t-shirt store in the description. Okay. Thanks very much.